Welcome to this video. We are going to overview very briefly everything we've learned about radioactive decay and connect it all together. Then we're going to take a look at something new called nuclear energy levels. Okay, we know there are three kinds of radioactive decay. There's alpha, beta, which includes beta plus and beta minus, and gamma. Each of these is different. Let's uh, take as an example uranium. Uranium undergoes alpha decay, and in the process, it transmutes or changes into thorium. So we have some initial sample of uranium. Let's say the half-life is five minutes. That's wrong. The half-life of uranium-234 is actually about 250,000 years. But for our sake, let's imagine it's five minutes. After five minutes, we know that the amount of uranium left is only half as much as what we started with. So half of the sample has become thorium. And in the process, each one of those uranium nuclei emits an alpha. So there's many more than what I've shown here. If we let five more minutes pass, then now half of the remaining uranium, half of the red that's left, turn into thorium. They transmute. And if we wait five more minutes, then in that amount of time, half of what was remaining will have changed into thorium. Now we learned some equations, and we've used these, which allow us to calculate how many uranium remain, how many reds are there left. And that's the equation we've seen. We've practiced with it. We've graphed using that equation. There's another equation pertaining to activity. And activity, in essence, is how many decays occur per second. Or in this case, how many alphas are emitted per second. The way that we measure activity is using something called a Geiger-Muller tube. And basically what it does is detects alpha particles in this case. The final thing we've looked at so far relates to stability. When these decays occur, they are natural. They happen without any human intervention out in nature. And when these decays are natural, when these trans natural transmutations occur, there's a whole host of things that we could st say about stability and energy. The well gets deeper for each nucleon, energy is being lost, the binding energy per nucleon increases, and a lower, more stable energy level is reached. What we're going to focus on right now is the bottom one, the nucleus has lost energy. So what we know is that in decays, the nucleus loses energy. And because of the equivalence between energy and mass, the nucleus also loses mass. Here's that picture. You start out with some nucleus, and we're going to be measuring the mass or energy, the mass energy, let's call it, of the nucleus. So first, let's say that it has negative 12 mega electron volts because it's bound together. And so it's at a lower energy state, lower energy level, than when those nucleons are totally free. Okay, here it is right now, as shown, negative 12 MeV of energy for the whole nucleus, all four together. Then there's some gamma radiation. A gamma ray photon is emitted, maybe four, and as a result, the nucleus has less mass and less energy. Let's say it's now down to negative 20, so it lost 8 MeV. And then another gamma photon emission occurs, and it loses even more mass, more energy. And let's say it's gone down to negative 24. So at that time, it only lost 4 MeV. We can draw a picture representing those energy levels. You make an, a y-axis, and the higher up on the y-axis you go, the greater the energy. So at the very top is the highest energy, which would be negative 12, where we started. And then what happened to the nucleus? Through gamma decay, it fell to a lower energy state, a lower energy level. Then through another gamma decay, 
it fell to another lower energy level. Let's take a look at what happens with alpha decay, and we'll use the same example from before, uranium and thorium. This is slightly different from gamma, gamma decay. Here's an example. Uh, here's the example using uranium and thorium. Uranium is really, really big, and thorium is really, really big. 234, 230. The alpha particle is tiny, really, really small. So here we are, we start with the uranium, and then it transmutes, it changes naturally into an alpha particle, which is small, and thorium, which is still pretty big. And then there's all this energy released in the reaction. Where does that energy go? Well, it's not emitted in this case. It's not emitted as a gamma photon. Instead, it's given to the alpha particle as kinetic energy. And a tiny little sliver is given to the thorium as kinetic energy. But this amount is basically negligible, so we'll just ignore it. Because the alpha gets thrown upward, this recoils and goes down. Now, here's the cool thing. This is not what happens every single time. The alpha doesn't always get that much kinetic energy. Sometimes, in the decay, the alpha has a little more energy. And other times, the alpha has even more energy. So what's happening then to the nucleus, to the thorium? In some cases, it loses more energy. And in other cases, it loses less and even less. The best way to plot what happens is using the energy y-axis. First, we have uranium, and then we have thorium. So we have to separate those somehow. What we do to separate them is put uranium on the right, thorium on the left. So we start out with uranium. And at that point, the energy is highest. In some cases, we lose 4.8 mega electron volts are lost in the alpha decay. And then we've changed down to thorium. So that's a big energy loss. In other cases, we lose 4.2. And then in some cases, we lose just slightly less, 4.1. So this is how we represent those alpha decays. We can add energy amounts on the left side on the y-axis. So far, all we've ever done is used negative energies. Sometimes problems might use positive energies. So let's, for simplicity, let's say that the uranium has 4.8 MeV to start. In the first case here, it loses all 4.8 and results with zero MeV. So the resulting nucleus in that case would have zero. In the other case, it would have 0.6 and 0.7. And we can find those values by simple subtraction. 4.8 minus 4.1 is lost. How much uh, energy remains with the thorium nucleus? 0.7. These are nuclear energy levels. And when we talk about nuclear energy levels, we're talking about this picture. Notice the alpha particles always have these energies. And so the nuclei always have either 4.8 MeV, 0 0.7, 0 0.6, or 0. It's not a continuous spectrum of possible energies. The ones I've shown are the only allowed energy levels that the nucleus can have. Because there are only certain allowable energy levels, we say that the nucleus has discrete, has a discrete energy spectrum.